Hi, my name is Gefei Liu. If you want to learn more about my play Birds and the Curiosity, written by me and Olivia Xing, please check out this video. Hi, I'm Olivia Xing. I'm the director and playwright for the new theater for audience and AAPI piece, Birds and the Curiosity, Niao Yu Hao Qi Hao. It's a coming of age story of the nine-year-old Chinese girl and her time-traveling future self and many birds and a singing hamster. Hmm, want to know more? Come see our show. I think I, um, I first fall in love with theater. I think it is when I was back in high school. So, um, I mean, when I was in elementary school and when I was in middle school, I did go to theater, but um, because uh, from where where I come from, there there wasn't much going on in the theaters at that time. So yeah, I, I wasn't that exposed to theaters when I was like when I was a kid. Um, but when I entered uh, middle school, um, I met um, several friends, and there was a art festival at our school. So it's a annual festival, and um, my friend and I we would um, put up sketch comedy shows every year, and that was just super fun. And we kept doing that each year. And um, I think I just generally I just really enjoyed working with friends, creating something new, creating something fun. So after I entered college, um, I didn't study anything theater related, but I joined um, the theater club and the musical club at college. And I still am very lucky. I met another bunch of friends and we work together. Those are just fun experience. So I think theater to me, it it's it's a way of finding friends, meeting people who I can um, connect with emotionally. Yeah. I first fell in love with theater in the freshman year of college where um, I <laughs> accidentally signed up for the audition for the production and I got cast. It's super cliche super cringy story um but it was it was it was a great experience we it was the piece was sarah rules you really see um like a feminist take uh, take on you really see and i love sarah rule but like i have no idea who she is who the piece what the piece is what character i'm playing or i didn't I have no idea what theater means um, either because I was born raised in China and I've never done any theater probably seen like one or two puppetry show and that's it um but I fall in love with it immediately because I was not a native speaker uh, when I and my English was not as fluent as um it is now my first came to America like that was six seven years ago so but on stage I felt seen and heard and it was it is it's, it's kind of selfish and it's like for person for my own reason why um I fall in love with theater and gradually I I, I feel like this uh, idea of something <clears throat> that's about empathy, that's about transcending language and uh, how, however you look and uh, however you sound like is not just, it, uh, it does not only benefit me, but benefit all the audience too like they could identify with the characters on stage and 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 feel represented and feel more free um why do i have to keep doing it it's because um wow 
why? Yeah, right. Why do I keep doing it? I'm losing so much money, and I'm losing so much sleep. And <laughs> why do I keep doing theater? Theater is so time consuming. Like the rehearsal, um, it's every night seven to eleven, and that's just. How it is like at least four or five hour long. It's not the same for film, for example. Although your shooting day may be twelve hour long, but there's barely any rehearsal, and uh, it just you shot it, it's done. It's not like you rehearse it; you have to present it, and anything could happen, and every iteration will be different. So. But that's the magic of theater, right? It's it's you have you have to be so present, and you have, and you you have to be so in the moment that every second I feel like you are given more life to it. There's always a quote. I growing up really love this quote, and and the context is that I growing up. Um, especially after my father passed, I have this like more mortality anxiety, and like I'm afraid of death, basically. <laughs>、um, and so this quote is: "Don't, don't give life time; give time life." Something more po poetically, poetic. But the idea is that. It's not about the length, but the depth of the、um, the moments where where we live. And in theory, I I I feel like juggling multiple things at the same time constantly in life.、Um, I am so focused and present when I'm making theater, and it's like magical. I think writing has been kind of hard for me, especially after. Um, I how do you say?、Um, especially after I become a an officially、um, an official grown up,、um, because I mean in China we were we have this like writing writing session in our Chinese exams, and it is graded, and it is graded in a way that is not.、Um, How do how do you say this? I feel like the grading system it just doesn't approve any creative writing.、Um, they just want the writing to be really、um, organized, and basically, creative ideas are are just not encouraged. So I I struggled for a time when I was in high school,、um, but、um, when I entered college, I think I feel I felt more. I feel kind of scared of writing sometimes because I feel like、um, my writing has always been graded, and、um, it 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 is hard to try to get rid of that grading system to get rid of that、um, examination system.、Um, so I think I eventually started to enjoy writing when I. Came here when I came to、um, Cal Arts for、um, grad school.、Um, I started to take some classes in writing, and I mean, even though it's still hard for me because、um, I mean I'm writing in a different language,、um, but it's nice to have those mentors and teachers who are so encouraging. They would always be like, "Oh, there's no way, no wrong ways of writing.、Uh, all the writings are good."、Um, I think this type of thought is just really relieving for me because I could just do free writes. I could just write on any silly ideas I have in mind, and I know that this is totally fine.、Um, that is just the way writing is. Who said I'm obsessed with writing? <laughs> I'm not obsessed.、Uh, I have, I have a life outside theater. Do I though? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm in tech yesterday, and then right after tech, I was in the Hollywood Fringe opening night to 
promote the show in an ostrich puppet. So I'm okay. So, okay, I'm kind of obsessed with writing and with, with theater. All right, <laughs> I'll admit that. Why am I? Why do I like writing? Why am I obsessed about? Well, I, I it's, it's, it, wow, it dates back from the college essay. I, I, I applied to America, uh, which is not the usual move. Um, mo but um, the the system in China is that you have to pass a standardized test to get into university. And I was particularly bad at math and all related subjects, like science related. Um, I wasn't that bad, but I'm not interested in it. I mean, if I have to do it a uh, sure but i have biased against a standardized test um and then i found this major called comparative literature that's only an undergrad major in the us or uk probably some other universities but i was looking at this major i was like wow comparative literature i get to do not just I get to do world literature, I get to study language, and I get to study the philosophy of storytelling. So I'm like, maybe I should apply to study that in America. Um, so I wrote my personal statement about how storytelling can change world. And um, from a very high school uh, a 16 year old perspective uh, I was trying to be deep I I didn't really know what I'm saying yet um, I still don't know how um, storytelling can change the world but I'm getting a more clear feeling um, and so I pursued that disciplinary and I studied multiple language. I also, I, I speak Mandarin and French. Um, so I did my thesis on um, the uh, the uh, graphic novel that's written, co-written by French and um, a Chinese illustrator. So like, how do you translate a text in graphic novel? Because text in graphic novel is not only textual, but also visual. So how do you translate that to, from from English to the Chinese characters? That is even more visual because <laughs> um, it's all, you know. Um, and then I started writing for theater um, during the pandemic, and that's like a bring moment because I have so much to say uh, about about the loneliness, the homesickness and the nostalgia and death. And uh, again, it go back to my um, mortality, anxiety. Um, and, uh, and I realized theater you, you you write it, but you could also those words are meant to be performed and heard. And guess what? Writing it's such a lonely process, but theater is such a collaborative process. And so I get to pre give my trust my piece of work, writing to others, and they will take care of it. And that's just I'm so grateful for the collaborativeness of, of of writing for theater um uh, i am i am, <clears throat> i am obsessed with writing and telling story because i think that's not just my instinct but also like our it's species instinct and a, a, it's very primal activity i'm saying this 
like it sounds like oh so metaphysical and like what are you talking about but but do you think about it like Wait, what's the word for human? Homo sapien? Homo sapien, like, exist because, um, because we, 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 we tell story to each other. We're like, at first the story is about, you know, um, we can create this kind of, uh, exchange system. Uh, I'll give you the uh, shells from my, where I live near the coast and you can give me some yam that you grow in the mountains and they talk to each other and then it, it, it becomes something that everyone believes in which is the economic system and because we all believe in the story telling the fiction this fictional thing but we all believe in it and so it works how crazy is that and so is our political system so is our day-to-day -day life it it's honestly a it's all about the trust in the st stories that we created um how we talk to each other this language and and the the words we use and um the the fables we always go back to that's about um brave cur courage that's uh, that's about integrity that's about kindness um that's against evil or, or, and against um uh, uh against uh, hurting other people and th th those are all stories that have been told again and again and again and we we try we believe in it and that's what make us us and as and like i realized that and that's i think lies in the foundation of my obsession among other things that make me really really love writing um but the foundation of it all is that we can't help it because it's it's instinct it's the instinct to try to talk to god try to pray for 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 for, for a ring because we think our story can't can make god cry and and so our core will keep grow. <laughs> like how like why are we how imaginative it is uh, but how natural it is and that's how theater is born like we dance for to pray for a, a ring a ring on the field so that's that it's a little bit too long and a little bit like brain vomiting but yeah that's that i think theater can really connect people I mean, either it be like connect um, people within the production team, the actors, the designers, the managers, uh, or connecting the team with the audience. I mean, we always meet new people in the theater and maybe there will be chance to make friends with someone in the audience. And this, um, this chance of meeting new people alive alive living people that is just so different from any other um forms of art why is theater unique and i have been thinking about this and trying to make sense of it because swear to god i wish i could just do tv there's much more money in there um and I, as an actor, I love acting for film too. I just wrapped a, a feature, my first lead role in a feature film in New York. Um, and that felt like an experience I've never had either. Because um, we were shooting on a subway station on New York. I can't do a theater piece in a subway station in New York. Um, but but that, the moment of my acting was captured there uh, through camera. So that was great. But 
But you know what? I was I, I was acting alone there. I wasn't engaging with any passerby in the in the subway station, as crowded as it was. So that was that's that's why um, <clears throat> I have to keep going back to theater because theater gather people, and you're sharing this moment together. The actor and the audience, you're sharing this moment together. And, and you can't have that with any other media. The painter in the gallery, he's not always, Picasso is not standing next to his uh, painting and explain the, the multiple perspective in this. And, the, but, um, and sometimes theater can even talk to the audience, like, like Brechtian work. We're like, we they break the false wall, and um, I came to realization of this because um, at the moment when I went to an anti Asian hate protest uh, during COVID, um, we were walking through the Brooklyn Bridge Park so many people were like holding a sign and i was like this is theater this is there's a, a line we keep repeating um people gather and uh, there's a formation of a movement and if we i call i quote quote if i quote peter brook if you have a space and a man traver tra tra traverse through the space that's theater um the space and the people and space people are in the space with one another that's that is power and uh, um recently a lot of live shows are banned in china after a stand-up comedian made a very innocent joke, but it could be interpreted, but was interpreted wrong and got fined uh, because the government wanted to. <laughs> um, I, um, I think people in power are afraid of the power that a live performance, a, a, a live performing art experience hold. Um, and that's why I want to do it, because if something you tell me I shouldn't do, oh, man, I wanted to do it even more. Um, for the goldfish piece, that's uh, we staged it in Seattle in December. Uh, after the protests happened in China, um, also in support of what's happening in Iran and um, well, uh, Ukraine, Russia, and other places um, in the world, and 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 the idea. Sometimes I wanted to create a theater. Um, is, is, is that we could see the piece and this, the amount of people will walk out of the theater together and we could just take on the streets. And that, you know, that's sort of a, that's how I see theater, it's, it's protest. I think we don't really have any idea how the story will turn, will turn out to be when we started writing it. Um, it's just that, um, last summer, Olivia and I, we were both so boring, we're so bored, and we just wanted to find something to do. And because previously we have produced a show based on Olivia's experience, so we were like, okay, fine, let's 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 create let's create a show based on my experience. So uh, we had a chat. We talked about. Uh, my experience, my especially my childhood, and we both think, oh, it will be 
it would be fun to create a story that is based on my childhood story, which is basically my experience at a uh, as a slightly oversized kid, <laughs> and that is how we um, uh, decided to go into the direction that we're going right now. The idea come from a talk with between me and my co-writer. And she was talking, Gafei was talking about how, like, sometimes she just think about the issue that she has now and start blaming on her childhood. It's a thing we all do, you know? We're like, this happened because this happened in the past. So now I'm this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, uh, doing this right now because I never was able to do this. Or like, it, it, it's a, it's limiting though, and it's not being present. So we're like, what if this adult has the same problem as we have? We're like. Well, all our problems because something we experienced in our childhood. But like, what if this adult go back to childhood and realize, oh, I can, instead of helping her, I can actually learn more from her. Like if, actually I possess all the qualities in my authentic self and I forgot them on the way of growing up. And I, I wasn't this unfortunate child i had the support of my family and friend um also i'm speaking this in the individual cases i'm not it's just when i say we it's like the playwright i'm not saying everyone had a happy childhood with support of family friends um but i am i, I do want to say that of uh, how to survive our childhood now that we're adult it's not about blaming the childhood uh being obsessed with what had happened. It's about being present. And so the protagonist, the, the, the future, the adult self, the adult version of our protagonist travel back and, and then, then travel back to her present time and, 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 and started to think that the way I survive my childhood present now that I'm adult. It's to be an adult and to be myself and love who I am, find who I find who I am and love who I, who I am and and move forward instead of go moving backwards. So we wrote like two, three, many versions of this story there's a few of them a few of them the earlier stages of this story it's told from this adult perspective looking back to childhood and they were like no 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 it's not wait wait but but this has she figured out she she figured out where was she gonna go and and, and but we honestly we we don't really know we don't really know yet. Uh, and because this, is, this piece is really personal, we want to stay true because we haven't figured out. We're still 20-something-year-old. We're like, oh, we could write from the how we were, how we felt. And the emotion, the, 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 the ecstasy, as well as the calamity we felt as a kid for tiny little things from um, sharing a snack uh, to, 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 to like losing a favorite sticker. And just like this tiny little thing cre creates such huge emotion in us. And we're like, we remember all of that. We could write all of that. And, and we could let the younger self teach the adult self something. The themes are multiple, but I think the most important one is 
um, to find your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And other uh, minor themes include um, a children's um, creative agency and the loss of um, your loved ones um, and, um, and also um, how to accept yourself as you are. When did I start doing puppetry? The first puppetry piece I made was um, for my uh, exchange program in Paris. Um, I was it again, like it's the same thing where you go to uh, another country and the language is not catching up with your thoughts. <laughs> but the great thing about puppetry is that you don't have to talk. <laughs> So, so I, I started doing a, a, a theater object, uh, object theater uh, with, uh, with a club at uh, the Paris Nanterre University. It's, uh, it was about the, it was about uncanny and uh, time and uh, mirroring. Uh, that it doesn't really have a story, but it's sort of like um, use puppetry to um, elucidate the, the concept that Freud keep talking about. Because, uh, um, you know, Freud is always talking about this doubling and uh, and, 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 and the, 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 the fear that's in us or something that looks almost like us, but not there. And that's pup sometimes that's puppet, and so um, so I started in in France, and then I came came back to the U.S. Uh, and <laughs> my last year, I have to do a thesis for my major in theater, and oh my god, COVID hit, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do a theater theater piece with other people. I have to do it at all, um, and so I. Well, I saw a show that's this uh, puppet that's made out of ice and it just throughout the show, it will keep melting. By the end of the show, it's just water. And it was one of the most beautiful piece I've ever seen. And I saw it on the screen. I didn't see it live. I was like, wow, this, um, it works. I think puppetry works for a screen. It, um, a lot of theater doesn't, but puppets sometimes do. Um, and and I think theater really needs to engage with time and the ice melting. That's like the most ingenious way to engage with time in theater. And so, and also I was very, I started being very politically active during COVID. I'm like, I'm so mad at what the Chinese government was doing. Um, especially censoring the doctors to release the the, the, the tr true information because they're afraid of causing a, a, a panic in the public. But but you can't but you can't throw a doctor in jail because they, they have wanted they have the the right information like anyway. Um and one of the whistleblower of COVID passed and that was like I was oh Oh, so I was started creating uh, object theater uh, where I'm silenced. I'm not talking. This time I'm silenced not because I have the language barriers because I can't talk. So 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 metaphorically and literally. Um, so I so 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 without but without words puppetry with uh, puppetry still we could still empathize with the puppet and even as simple as a found object that looks kind of like what's going on right now you just our brain it's crazy like we just make association and it's because we have the ability to empathize it's this and, and like it's amazing i think the power of empathy really really shows any object slash puppetry work
because that's not human, but we still cry for it. And like our heart tangles f- f- when when a little puppet fall off the stage, you know, like what, why? We know it wouldn't get hurt. It's made of wood. We still wanted to be sad about it. It's kind of crazy. And that's, that's, you know, if we keep practicing it, I think if, if children keep practicing it, uh, they'll grow up to a more sympathetic adult, you know? You could see someone that's going to hurt them and you want to help them. And it's the same ability. It's the ability to empathy. And uh, so, and then I started my MFA program at CalArts in acting. And one of the class we take was Janie Geyser. I love Janie. Shout out to Jenny. Janie Geyser is, is a performing object performing objects and I was reading about performing objects and how and there's a piece about marionette why it's my uh, puppets marionettes are better actors it's because they have no ego um and it's true they do things because they do things and they don't really care how their hair look like. And a lot of human actor can't do that, me included. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we just naturally, we just we always carry an ego. P- puppets don't. And when I'm manipulating puppet, I sort of let, down, let go of my ego too. Just, you know, people are not looking at you, people are looking at the puppet. So now with this piece, person of curiosity, why do we want to include puppets in this piece? Because it's uh, it's really about this nine-year-old girl going through her life and encounter some calamity in the first time. Bullying, body image issue, can't fit in a, a piece of costume. Um, why why is my why are my friends laughing at me? Why didn't Nana? pass away and why is my pet hamster also going to die at some point and why do i have why do people have to leave why do i have to lose things why can't i be happy all the time but she's dealing with such a childish and innocent and and, and joyful and hopeful way like she, like when she she's she she feels caged because <clears throat> The Chinese teacher me spies control. So she, at the at the day, she saw ostrich free running on the highway, and that's is it imagination or is it real? We don't know. But that's how kids in, see the world, right? They see the possibility of the world, and they see they see it was was. You could say unfiltered or with a filter that makes it even more true to how the world should be experienced. Um, it's just like we we want it to free. It is like the wonder, the wonderment. It's so important to um, this piece. So we thought, oh, you know what? A bit. We can't hire a real ostrich at the ostrich, <laughs> uh, but we could make a giant full body puppet that's a shiny ostrich that walk through the aisle of the audience. So it's made to make it just a little bit more immersive. And so the audience is invited to little robins, little chickens, part of the world. And how s- audience see how she see the world. That we're, audience is not caged. Where the hamster is, s- hamster, ha- hamster singing. And we're, we're, um, we're the, what else do, we're, we're, there's like, after Nana, after Nana died, a, a bird visited us and it, sort of sound like Nana um so it's it's about again it's about dealing trauma um but you know theater has always have a a a, a, 
a soft way to deal with trauma. Um, it's just it's magic. Um, and also there's a play theater section in the play that is um about uh an adaptation of Ugly Duckling. Because Ugly Duckling kind of gives teaches kids a wrong message. Like you couldn't bully someone because what? Because they will turn into a beautiful white swan? No, it's just you should be kind to someone no matter how they look. And you know what? It's okay to just be an Ugly Duckling because it's not about being ugly. It's it's just Ugly Duckling is not ugly. It's Ugly Duckling just looks different from the brother and sisters. And it's okay to be different. Don't have to be swan. So the story of Ugly Duckling should be about discovering who you are and who you always have been. You don't have to have a magical makeover or transformation. And so our nine-year-old protagonist rewrite the story in the play. So it's a play in a play and put on this little toy theater with her, two of her best friend uh, that's about ducklings and they learn about each other and they learn about how everyone's different from one another which makes us all the same i mean olivia and i we have been working on a lot of i mean maybe five projects together before um i think we are two very different people but we kind of complete each other in some way um especially in writing so i think in writing she is she she is very good at just flowing with the natural going with the natural flow um and she she is very good at like writing very natural conversations um and she is always she has this very cheerful energy that could always um how do you say like whenever i was down or anything when i was upset she has this energy to just cheer me up um and um but we do have some similarities i think we both have a very special sense of humor <laughs> um and that is why um, writing with her is never too bored, too boring. My my co creator, my my co creator is Ge Fei, uh, who is majoring in creative producing and management at CalArts. We're the same year. We're both Master of Fine Arts, year two. We're graduating next year. This is the fifth work we've collaborated to create together. Um, the first one is Every Brilliant Thing. We did the Chinese version of it on Zoom during the pandemic. And then we did our rooftop show where uh, Gafei helped me produce it. Um, and then we did a, a show, a interview based show that's about that where we interviewed uh, six community member from Wuhan, the where COVID originally, the pandemics originally started, and we that was a Zoom show too. It's verbatim, and I I was the uh, write, a writer, uh, but we interviewed the participants together, um, and then we did. Oh wow, this is the six people. Okay, no that doesn't count um oh, and then we did uh, the goldfish that one is our the first one act play we co-wrote together and the thing about writing together it's a question it's something we get to ask a lot about because usually the playwright is one person. Mm. How do we write together? It's kind of amazing. And uh, I don't know how it works either, really. But we are, we have a, a various skill 
like different. We're obviously different from each other. Um, a good fay. I think a good fay sometimes like will has like an idea of the story and will like talk about it together. And um, I as an actor, uh, are, uh, tend to write for for the character. Likes writing for the character in a, a a dialogue, and also we we get to improv with each other and create the dialogue that way. And Gafe, I think she's、uh, naturally better in the like the the plot plot twist and like the the structure um of the story. So so it just it it worked for for some reason, and all we're both very hardworking and uh, passionate. And we're very passionate, which makes us make a lot of bad financial decision when you're too passionate about something. Putting that aside,、um, we put a lot of work in writing, and we actually have work a、uh, writing session every day for many, 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 many hours. And it, it's the diligence. I I think writing. Sometimes we think of writing and creating art. It's this like you have a thing that's so random, and and you have to wait for God to inspire you. But sometimes, honestly, it is just it's diligence and and work, and you just have to put the time. And it's easier to put into the time when you have a buddy. That's why you have a gym buddy. You have a you have a. Workout buddy, you have a what? What else? You have a study buddy, and you have a language buddy, and this is Gavay's my writing buddy, theater buddy. Um, so theater magic that gathered us. It's great. And that's all I'll say. I think I want the audience, um, when they when they are when they are walking out of the theater, I want them to feel like, wow, this is. Theater, <laughs> I this sounds a little bit ambitious, but I want to redefine theater for them to make them feel like oh, theater isn't just Shakespeare. Theater isn't just serious, expensive stuff. Theater is accessible. It's fun. What I want the audience to get out of this production is, um. Some laughs, some、um, some some some、um, other emotions. <laughs> some laughs.、Uh, what I wanted my audience to get out of this piece is、uh, an experience that. Make them kind of ha sometimes happy,、uh, sometimes moved, sometimes kind of sad, but eventually some hopes.、Um, and to all the kids that will see the show, I want to say, you, if anyone can overturn this. Capitalist and hierarchical and、uh, bad, bad <laughs> theater system, <laughs> this,、um, and make more experimental and beautiful and heartfelt pieces. Is the young is the next generation, and honestly, not only in theater. I hope you can. The kids will see this play and feel like I could change the world, and I hope the adult see this play and feel like I can still change the world. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to hear some feedback from the audience,、um, especially、um, the kid. The kids. We're now marketing the show as a family friendly. A show, and there will be a lot of kids coming to see our show, and this is quite a new experience for me because this is like my first kids-friendly show, and I think they will have some、um, completely different reaction 
than adults, and that will be that will be fun. People who like theater for young audience should definitely come. And I think theater for young audience as a concept need to be ex expanded, because I think theater audience should be fun for both kids and adults. So adults should come too. What else? I think I just want to say that this story, although it's a coming of age story of this nine year old little girl, it's also about the other characters, and each character has a a lot of personality and has their own storyline. For example, the grandma. For example, the mom. For example, the bird columnist uh, that a little Zhigong loves reading. Um, uh, for example, the adult uh, version of our protagonist. Uh, for example, the cat hamster. Like you even get to know about the the origin story and the whole story of a little hamster and and there's also uh, a dialogues of of uh, these two passengers on the bus and so it's not a classic one act or three act play uh, I would say it's more like a photo album or a constellation um, with many moments and many characters um, that's has that's that's connected by a central theme um, and they're all in this photo album where you can just flip through and you're like oh wow this scene this this scene is the style is over exposed um, and this scene is more saturated color and this scene is kind of it's intimate and it's a little bit sad and it, it, this and this this photo uh has a, a lot of puppets in it so you're just like flipping this album and i'm sure one of the picture will hit you <laughs> I think a more um, genuine answer is um, I think this is a very private story um, that is universal in its theme. And I believe that people will find um, moments in this play that will truly impress them and live with them af even after they leave this theater. Hi, my name is Gefei Liu. Um, my play Birds and the Curiosity written by me and my friend Olivia Xing. There will be shadow puppets, a giant ostrich, a hamster's singing, and a lot of other fun stuff happening in this show. Um, it's family friendly, but it's also welcoming all age audiences. Um, you will laugh for sure. You will probably cry a little bit if you're emotional. Um, but anyways, um, it is a story that I believe should be heard by everybody. And please come to see Birds and the Curiosity. See you at the theater. Hi, I'm Olivia Singh. I'm the director and playwright for the new Theater for Audience and AAPI piece. Birds and the Curiosity, Niao Yu Hao Qi Hao. It's a coming of age story of the nine year old Chinese girl and her time traveling future self, and many birds and a singing hamster. Hmm, wanna know more? Come see our show.